Yeah. God, handles like a pig. Really? We're live again. Hey. Hey, we're back. back. All right. Now, where were we? Oh, we have nobody. Nobody on so lonely. Oh. Yeah. Even though, does anybody even care anymore? No, we yeah. Oh, let's see. I've got one more like. I'm winning. I'm oh, shit. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got a like before we had a view. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. It's clever. It's just how much they like me. Mm -hmm. ah. There you go. Go McKay's guy, Wayne. Yes, no, Rocco, you're third on the reboot. You've got to be quicker than that, son. Quicker, yeah. Should be waiting for us. All right. Uh, now, we had a super chat about the quadruped carburetor on a 318. Yes. It falls on its face after five seconds of throttle. Right. Well, why don't we wait and see? Do you remember what his name was? I don't. Okay. I was trying to remember the content of his question. Give him a few minutes, so like, let, let it repopulate, and then we'll go back, and hopefully he came back. Um, Terrence Seymour is here now. Could have made it all better. Yes. And, yes, Dr. Art's channel, right? So, Fubo just put up the link to that. And then uh, Kiwi's channel. Kiwi has no subs. He doesn't need any more subs. So, yeah, don't worry about that now. <laughs> Go to my channel sub, go buy something. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can see the you can't yeah. find anything about you. Yeah. And of course, Fubar put up a link to our merch. So we got our, our hats and we got our thing. Oh, we got our shirts. See, everything's backwards. Okay. That one, right? Sketchy. We got the sketchy shirt. We got the uh, internal combustion because they pee standing up shirt. We've got tens of thousands of those because we way over ordered. <laughs> <laughs> But it was selling like crazy. So it's like, oh, better put in an order. Yeah. Uh, put in a big order. Yeah. Oh, no, a bigger order. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Okay, so you got yeah. shirts for the next I got shirts, I got shirts up the last two. Jay Russell Finch, he's asked this a couple of times now. Have you ever seen an inertia, star, inertia starter in a car? Is it possible? What actually is an inertia starter? They use them on uh, aircraft, huh? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a inertia. Space, yeah, it's like a like a compressed air starter, like a plasma shotgun shell. Oh, and they, okay. And use that use that to, to start the motor. They use it all on farm equipment. Yeah, old farm equipment yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. We need subs or hoagies. <laughs> <laughs> Either one would be fine. Yeah, you want to send sandwiches? That's cool. Ter uh, territory. Happy to hear about the propane engine going into Richard. Maybe, the, maybe the propane, propane. Maybe the whole, and that would be a good comparison too, because it's smaller motor with the same CFM on a propane. See how much you get out of it versus the 361. I, I think it's a great idea. If, if you want to get involved with it, I don't want to. I don't want to like push you into. But like I said, let's get want to. let's get it dialed. <laughs> Dean Stevenson, good Kiwi boy. The World Economic Forum has decreed that every employee must carry a designated village yeah. idiot. Guys, I am here for just such a time as this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. I can, I can relate to that. Um, you are not a real village idiot, Dean. You're, you're just unique, bro. You're unique. And I, for one, appreciate you. Well, they had a Thunderbird 1968. They had inertia starters on tanks and lots of older European cars. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, is this a true? I've read where in post-war they were selling Cadillac engines with like like army surplus, but they were Cadillac, apparently Cadillac made engines for tanks, and they had counter-rotational V8s, and people were putting these counter-rotating V8s in, in hot rods and having no, you know, one no. forward gear and four reverse gears. <laughs> The Cadillac motors were used in, in uh, marines, marine application. Oh, okay. Right, like the boats. Peaky boats. Yeah, peaky boats. Yeah. And yeah, they'd use, they'd use two or four of them, and two of them would be reverse rotation, and the other two would be correct rotation. Yeah, so they would breed where they, they would put those engines in the cars and yeah. <laughs> put it here and go. Or change the cam to a correct rotation and have it or remain sealy forever. Because oh, the that, knurling is, is the other the way. Other way. Ah, never thought of that. Yeah, good point. Um, somebody asked a Stromboli or, or a Calzone. I have no regard for Stromboli. I mean, like, literally, I have zero. I, I 
when people present me with stromboli, I want to run it over with my car. Calzones, on the other hand, I'm a freak for calzones. You can't keep me away from a fried calzone, right? I, I, that's, I think, my favorite food in the world, hmm. which is why I look the way I do. Territory, yeah, on power tour, you should mock Teslas at charging stations as you swell the propane tank and get back on your way. See you, guys. Be a lot quicker. <laughs> Jeff Hutchins did Kiwi get the blame? Yeah, I did. I did. Apparently, I did get this on the yeah, table. He did that. Yeah, yes. and um, well, just a little, you know, little tap. Things are a little fragile here. The destroyer of electrons. <laughs> yeah, the destroyer of electrons. It's my electric personality mm -hmm. right, so created a field. Um, to hell the funky Homo sapiens reverse rotation Cadillac V8. Okay, that's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Thunderbird 16 is saying actually modern hot running really took after took off after World War II with returning pilots bringing their aircraft knowledge to the streets. Lots of cool stuff done with the Allison airplane motors and racing. Did you see you guys know Brian Bones? Yes. You, Bones, yeah. Yeah, okay. Did you see the video he did on our files? I didn't um, I seen it, I didn't click on it. Oh bro, I, I the only thing wrong with that video is that it should have been an hour longer. Really? Yeah. I'll go back and look at it. It was great. Because his videos are pretty good. I was fantastic. He's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, so, yeah, you guys want to check out. Um, anything Loans does is, is over the top. The guy is too good at what he does as far as like making videos and stuff. But if you're interested in aircraft engines and, and, and land speed racing from that period of time, like the, the middle end of the 50s until the 1960s, he just did one on uh, our funds. So definitely check that out. It was fantastic. Great video. Oh yeah, M5 Stewart and M24 Chaffee tanks also use the Cadillac V8s with hydromatics. Huh. Really? Ford the sedan 57 Chevy. Mm. Mm. That's what that, I'd read about them being in, in tanks. And okay, I would have thought reverse rotation. I would. I, well, because of the left and right tracks. Yeah. You know, the okay. Engines, okay. Like probably went face to face, so like timing cover to timing cover, maybe to drive the tracks. Possibly. I don't know. Somebody would know a lot more about, about yeah. that stuff than I. With the propane tanks, my other cars at Charbroil. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> when you run the propane it's in the truck, make, some... make a bumper sticker that says my other car is at Charbroil. <laughs> what channel is that? Brian Wollens. B Brian, you know. Loans, L O H N E S. Okay. You would know he's, he's uh, the head announcer for the NHRA now. Huh. But, but I don't hold that against him. I sort of Everybody needs a job, right? Everyone needs a job. And he's, and he's, and he's best buds with, with Freiburger, and I don't hold that against him either. Well, maybe I do hold that against him. If you, I, I love you anyway, Brian. Mm -hmm. I saw a leak short a couple of days ago on um, Instagram. And it was about the radial, the biggest engines, you know, like, and they were talking about the radial engines they put in planes and yeah. um, some boats and there, some of the PT boats and stuff like that. And um, one of them was like 386 litres. <laughs> <laughs> Not cubic inches, litres. Oh, it was like a twin thing. It was like, it was like, yeah, something like that. The, yeah. the biggest one they had was like, they had five or six straight eights all opposed. You know the radial, mm -hmm. so it was like forty something cylinders and three hundred and eighty six liters or something like. You know, it was like yeah, imagine you know, like ten like and a half thousand horsepower back then. Mm -hmm. The Kiwi's Navy. <laughs> what? The Kiwi's Navy. The Kiwi. <laughs> New ways to power the raft. Mm. Burned it and put your to power the raft. Oh, shit. Now, Burned Out said something about oh, yeah, we're doing, 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 but the 361727 is ready to go. The truck needs the trains anyway. Propane is made for off cow farts. Trucks are used on farms. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, the, the, so the 361 is the propane motor you've got out there in the truck. Yeah, it's all yeah. coupled together, it's already going. But, but Power Tour is in June, and I'm probably two or three days away from dropping this motor into the car. Oh. So I 
don't want to put it off any further. I would much rather just give him the propane switch, stuff. Switch the hat in the tank too, right. and be done. Yeah, easier. Um, yeah, that's something about that super chat on the car reader. Oh, yeah, okay. You might have to restate your ten dollar super chat at 17 cap. I've been trying, but they aren't seeing. Okay, 710 cap. We we talked about that, and it sounds like you've got an air leak on the suction side of the, the fuel system. Hmm. We talked about that while we were rebooting this. Yeah, you shouldn't be getting lots of air bubbles in with the, in your fuel supply. Yeah, 710 cap. The, uh, uh, he's saying it's not worth another ten dollars. No, bro. I, we were waiting for for you to pop in. We didn't want to just. We didn't know you came back, so we didn't want to talk about it until you came back. But yes, after we went, we, we discussed it amongst ourselves while we were rebooting. And it sounds like you've got an in, a, an air leak on the inside on the inlet side of the fuel system between the tank. And the pump. Yeah, someplace between the tank and the pump. That's where your air is coming from. It's sucking it out of the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that could be the that could be the problem. What about float levels? Could he just be having the float levels? Well, he's talking about foam. Or well, yeah, with all the air stuff. bubbles, but yeah. I mean, as as an alternative issue, that might be float levels wrong. It's it's possible. It's mm -hmm. possible. It depends how much air he's. It was a thermal quad though. Right? Uh, quadrigy. Quadrigy. Oh, quadrigy. 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 Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's a possibility. Have, have you have you been inside the carburetor? Rocco, 17 new fuel line is garbage check for air leaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Copy that. Um, so 17 is still with us, so that's good. Yeah. We do appreciate Super Chat, but it was just unfortunate timing on the on me banging the table and screwing up the system. Uh, oh, wait. See, this was Chris Cabin's fault. I'm blaming you, Kiwi. <laughs> but he took his dog out for a walk and everything crashed. So there you go. Yeah, um, leave, leave the dog at home. Blame, yeah. Like no, more, no more no more midstream food. dog walks. Well, no, I mean that's just that's just rude to go walking the dog when graced with our presence. I mean, really, right? Fine. You can't you can't wait an hour. I'm sure the dog will be fine. <laughs> yeah. Thunderbird sixty eight. What weight of oil do you recommend for a big block race applications? Broad question. Way broad question. It, it, it's it's not possible to answer because the, the range of racing is so much and the range of internal engine requirements is so much and the range of available oils is so much that it's just not a possible question to answer. Well, he, uh, you go. Know, we can just make stuff up. Mm -hmm. Territory, Dr. Art, since you'll be carrying propane, get one of those 1950s serval propane gas refrigerators and you can have an overlanding Richard. Oh, yeah, out of like an RV, a propane car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then we can have cold beer yeah. at whenever. It, yeah. look, it looks to me that they've decided on what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tail, the tail's wagging the dog here. And, you know, uh, listen. Mm -hmm. Rocco, Kiwi, I was watching a video on vintage gases in New Zealand. It looks like hot rotting is alive and well down there. Hot rotting is going from strength to strength in New Zealand. It's crazy. Uh, um, they're buying up cars out of America as fast as they can get them. Um, and like they're expensive in New Zealand with all the complying and the taxes and all that fun stuff. You know, um, shipping and yeah, markups and from exchange the rates and yeah. all that sort of stuff. You, they're paying at least double for any given car that, that you, you want to buy here. That's at least double, at least double in New Zealand. It's a lot of money. Um, but you know, they're laying down the money and they, they, they do that. I ship cars over to England in the last 10 years too. They pay up, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it's a supply and demand thing. Right. Yeah. The supply here is <clears throat> very generous, and the mm. supply over there is not. Um, and the Mopar fans in New Zealand are just as nutty as they are here. Case in point. Berserk. <laughs> 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 Clearly something wrong with us. I'll be the first like, to admit it. Like, they'll, they'll pay, like, just so much for a, a nice Mopar. The Mopar tax. Yeah, the Mopar tax. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does it have to date coded? Studs on the one. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, that's why it's six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, the, okay. So the thing is, if you if you're an American, or if you're here, I should say, and you're selling cars to a place like New Zealand or England or any place mm -hmm. like that, you kind of know off the bat you're dealing with well-off people. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Like, so if you try to sell something here, it's like, you know, it's, it's the shotgun approach because it's like, well, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to take a, a Every mouth reader in marketplace is, right, yeah. I'll trade you my red news dog. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But when you get somebody from from the foreign lands reach out to you, you know that they've got the loot. You know what I mean? Like, right. They, they, yeah, they can afford it. It, right. it was nice because I was just I got a UK Falcons and I sold a bunch of old Falcons that I picked up. You know, just oh, around here. Okay. I would take all the interior up carpet out, video the whole floor pans and everything like that, post it on their website, and I have people call me all the time and go, "Okay, I'll send you a deposit know. when the guy comes with the truck to pick it up." They'll give you a certified check. They take it. They ship it. All I can say it was a wonderful thing until yeah. until everything went to shit a couple of years ago. <laughs> you know, the, a lot of people used what COVID did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just shut everything down. Yeah, a lot of people used to bitch about our cars going to other places. You know, it's like oh, I'm the because the, the Japanese were buying them all yeah, yeah. for a while, right? And wealthy people all over the world want our cars, right? And see, I always I always saw it as like. If they're going there, okay, yeah, we're not going to have it here anymore, but that car is going to be truly honored. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, somebody's going to take yeah. all the money, do it right. They're not going to just take it and beat the crap out of it. Right. This is going to be yeah. a sacred object. It's not just going to be yeah. a car. It's not, yeah. So it never really bothers me if the stuff goes. No, it's, if somebody's just going to a good home. That somebody, they're going to enjoy it more than someone would here. Yep. Well, oh, and, well, and yeah, it's a tiny season. They, they just valued so much more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of the cars I see through the shop that, you know, you, you see repair work that was done when they were 10 years old and worth $800, $200. Mm -hmm. Now they're worth $80,000. Right. Um, but some of the repair work was done back then when it was a $1,200 car. That was and, just and, good and, enough and, for a $1,200 car. Yeah. Um, in, New, in New Zealand and Australia and probably England, I can't really speak to that, but um, they were never $1,200 cars. Right. So they were always valuable and sought after and, and you know appreciated. So the level of work through their entire life has been quite high. And, and, and over there, you can't, like here, you could drive a rolling total. Yeah. Until it falls apart. Yeah, yeah. Over there, like in England, they have the OT inspections every year. And they, yeah. You can't have rust, you can't have this, you can't have that. So and when you send them a car over there, they, they put it together so it'll pass. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So they have to put the money yeah. to work into it. Yeah. And 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 they have to. If you want to drive it every year, you've got to pass the test every year. Mm -hmm. So you've got to stay on top of it. They don't sit in a in a field for twenty years. Right. All right. Uh, seventy three. Uh, I remember her. So I came across the Direct Connection porting template for the four seventy six castings. Is the port close enough on a nine hundred six for the templates to be useful? Yes, it is. Yeah, they'll, they'll work fine. Andrew Button in Sweden, they do a lot of big old luxury car stuff we didn't yeah. appreciate. Yeah, they do that. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, on Sweden, they're big on um, the forward look. The forward look, yeah, you took the words right out of the mouth. Yeah. Right. There, there's like there's a guy over there making windshields for them and stuff like that and um, repopping. There's these chrome bumper extensions you put on each end of the bumper. Okay. Um, and he's remaking those. Like the people, are, you know, if you can get a set of these things, they're like four grand. For a set of four of these bumper extensions, and, and they're making them from scratch over in Sweden. I don't know how much they are, but yeah, but yeah, they um, they're into it. End of time. They're saying the goal is to save as many as possible, no matter where they are. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think you. I think the American. Car fans will be amazed how many are offshore. Just the, the sheer numbers are just are offshore. It blew my mind last time I went to a hot rod run in New Zealand, just how many cars. Uh, the US cars were there. Whew, huge amount. All right. Uh, Willie Bebb, 2W1. First time visiting the live stream. What's the verdict on the 318 that's in the D100 rebuild? It's, it's, it's dirty, full of silt, mud, and ick, but it's going to live. Yeah, you know, it's getting rebuilt. Yeah, it's getting rebuilt. It's getting a, you know, well, a cookie rebuild. It's not. It's not. Yeah, a, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a it's a it's a driveway rebuild, but it's it'll run better than it did. And it'll sound good. And it's a freshener. It's a refresh. It's a refresh. Yeah. There's not a lot of machining getting done. There's no crank grinding. There's no reboring. There's no don't you taking your blocks or line homing. Or, no, I mean, we'll service a block with you know with 
you know, straight out in the sand paper, you know, make sure it's all clean and good. I mean, do it right. Yeah. But it's not going to, there's going to be no machine shop bill. Right, here's, a, here's a good question. Uh, Thunderbird 1968. What do you do if a rim hub size doesn't fit the axle hub? You, I'm sure, come across this all the time. Oh, all right. Well, that's basically hub centric or stud stud centric yeah. Yeah, um, is, is the term. Uh, the hole in the wheel does not have to fit the hub exactly. The register. The re yeah. that's, that, that's cool. That part, that, so, so the, the big round part of it that would sit on the hub is called the register. Right. Okay. They don't have to match perfectly. There's two different methods of hold, of, you know, like, like I said, it's called hub centric or stud centric. Uh, so. And if the stub on the end of the axle is smaller than the opening of the wheel, they do make hub centering rings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can get, get um, yeah, hub centering rings, as, as Dr. Art says, uh, and, but not absolutely necessary. Um, if, you get a, if you're building a race car and you're putting the car really through some high stress situations, um, you know, they, they definitely build them, make them, you know, to be hub centric. Most of the modern cars yeah. run on being hub centric, but the old school of cars, like, like we tend to be interested in, uh, yeah. So uh, your acorn lug nuts center the wheel. Yeah, yeah, they, those, especially the tapered, you know, the tapered sort of acorn lug yeah. nuts, um, but they center the wheel and, um, I mean, typically, like aftermarket wheels aren't hub centric. No. Aftermarket wheels, especially like Unilux, that sort of stuff, were not, not only didn't they have a register that was going to match what was on your car, but it didn't have a pattern that was going to match what was on your <laughs> car either. Just a slot. Yeah, just a slot and washers. The only yeah. thing that held that place, the, the wheel in place, is the washers. So, for, a, for a, a regular street application, providing you've got, you've got the correct type of lug nuts with enough. Of a, of a bevel to them, let's say. Is that what you call it? The, 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 yeah, yeah, the bevel. Yeah, the bevel. Right. right. Um, for, for, for street driving, I wouldn't worry about it. For, for most drag racing, I, I really wouldn't worry about it. If you get into situations like, let's just say, off road, right? That's where I would think that you would definitely want to have some sort of adapter in there. Anytime, anytime you've got a lot of potential shock loading and stuff like that. Because you don't want all of the wheel of the vehicle to be all the shock to go through the wheel yeah, studs. So right. you know, You'll break the studs. So yeah, that's what I say. Hmm. I agree. Old cars and old cars and music. I've done uh Magnum five hundreds have no center register to speak of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, have any of you worked on a three G eighty three? It's a nineteen ninety Mitsubishi Mini Cab. No. No. I think I saw it at the car wash once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the mama. Just helps take the load off the wheel studs. Yep. Uh, what rear is in big rich? Eight and three quarter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's an eight and three quarter of unknown gearing, but we'll figure that out. That's TBA. There's probably three fifty fives. Probably. Probably. More likely. If it's the original axle. Yeah. So probably. That'd be yeah. a fairly wide axle, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be too much. Is that wider than the, your typical eight and three quarter? Like a big yes. body one or something? Yeah, it's about the same width as a C body. Uh, okay. The one on Slate Hammer, right? Yeah, same width. All right. Actually, if you look at Slate Hammer, that's, if you put those wheels, well, no, okay, yeah, the body's definitely. But if you, if you look at Slate Hammer, that outside tire, outside tire is what you're going to end up with on those rims. No, okay. Rims. I had picked those up as spares for this car. Uh, Joe Kane, what do you think of that 68 Mustang on Jay Leno's channel? I haven't seen it, mate, so I don't know. Um, don't know. I seen a thumbnail for it. It was like 707 horsepower or something. No, all right. It, hmm. it didn't interest me at all. Yeah. Well, 700 horsepower is not that. Big deal anymore. Really? No. Richard, you really want people to go, who are you? You've got to be four figures, don't you? You've got to right. be over a thousand. Right. Okay. Uh, Richard Stanberry, how accurate is the performance indicator for figuring gas economy on my 66 Barracuda? Very, very. It's a vacuum gauge. It's only, it's just a vacuum gauge. So just follow it, you know, just, just always try to drive to the to economy now, always drive to the highest vacuum. And be not, you, know, you would be surprised. 
how if okay like you know how you drive normally right just and you're not speeding you're not going crazy you're just driving in traffic you would be surprised the difference between like where your foot is going to be with and without paying attention to a vacuum gauge because when you watch the vacuum gauge you realize that there's in, in this is really especially carbureted cars there's a range of throttle motion they'll kind of keep the car in the same speed range okay and it only shows up you only realize that so in other words like you're going to maintain 30 miles an hour with a heavy foot or 30 miles an hour with a light foot and you don't realize that even exists until you start paying attention to a vacuum gauge and just paying attention to the vacuum gauge all by itself will add two or three miles at a gallon to your overall hmm. i think the first time i've seen one of those was on like a 72 monte carlo or something like yeah. that and i'm like oh, that, you know when i was 13 i'm like oh that's cool you know <laughs> yeah they put them on i think it was some of the gm products in, this, in australia and new zealand they called them they were an economy gauge yeah yeah, yeah. And it just had like it had yeah, green middle, economy and red green performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is it called? Performance indicator or, or the economizer gauge, depending on where But was the value gauge? Yeah. So Willie Beb is saying, saw the walls are glazed after watching your videos. It gave me a lot of confidence to tear it down. It's also a small engine, so I mess it up. Oh well. Well, good, good. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad glad the videos are making you feel more confident. I mean. Uh, you know, it's um, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, really. She'll pay attention. Yeah, and if you get stuck, there's YouTube. You know, yeah, somebody's done it already. Thunderbird sixty eight. Any tips to convert? Yeah, scroll up. Any tips to convert automatic side windows to manual? Hmm, that's Depends funny. You asked that. I've got it. That Mustang. I've got a Mustang in the shop at the moment, and it's got the electric windows conversion in it. And the lady that owns it wants to convert it back to manual windows. She wants to crank back in. Yeah, um, which I mean, that's just a matter of ringing up and ordering, you know, the, 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 the regular standard regulators, and away mm -hmm. you go. Um, part of the problem she has with it, they keep tearing up. It's got the door switches on the winder handles mm -hmm. that look like window winder handles, and you push it one down or yes. up. Okay. You know. But she, whenever someone gets in the passenger side, they grab the handle, try to wind it, it doesn't <laughs> want to go, so they pull harder. Oh. And that's the end of the switch. So yeah, she's kind of tired of that because she's going back to uh, Armstrong arm windows. Quit giving people rides in your Mustang. Well, yeah, they'll take care of that. That's yeah. really the least of the problems. She's, I think we mentioned it before. It's got that flaming river um, rack, and rack conversion. Handles like a pig. Oh, it's terrible. We did we did a little video um, this evening, um, just taking it around, around our, our block, which is a bit bumpy in places. And the thing zigs and zags and you know, oh, bumps steers like crazy. Well, they have a broken like tube or something in the rack. No, no, no. no it's it's just, just what made me what realize just how much bump steer it has. When it's on the ground, the wheels are kind of pointed the same direction. Okay. Yeah. Without putting it on an alignment machine. And I put it up in the ear, and the wheels just go like that. They, they keep going. They keep going. And up. I put a tape measure across the back and the front of them, across the matching grooves. Right. Hit five inches of toe out inches how's that possible it, as you lift they're, it up they're, they're the wheels good. just go like that because because the, the rack is this big so that that arm going out to the wheel is this far so it, when your suspension comes down it it, it goes down yeah so, I, mean, well, I, I understand the dynamic of that it was only a five inches it's massive difference but it i mean like bad like, engineering like full droop you know with the suspension hanging down like the lower arms like right. that and the steering arms like way higher at this end and way lower at the inner end okay so like they're just completely crossing paths so so let me ask you a question i don't know i'm asking would a different length steering arm knuckle um would that make a difference to on the, the short on the longer? spindle yeah on the spindle no it'll it, what it would if it was longer it would make it a little bit less yeah that's what it was shorter would make it more but then that but that then you've got like if you make it longer it's going to be like six turns from lock to lock you know right. we're trying to make it go okay um but i knew i didn't like the flaming river because i've driven a couple of other cars with them and the thing that really jumps out is that as you turn the steering they've got it it comes the column comes down on that traditional angle then it does like about a 70 degree turn okay. down to the rack <coughs> and those u joints won't 
don't handle that much turn. So it's got tight spots in it. On every oh, half a turn, you, you know, it's like loose, tight, mm -hmm. and, and you go over the hump, and then it drops on the other side of the U-joint. So it's doing that all the time. And oh, well, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a bit of a like. This is what I think. But how big a piece of shit I think this flaming river rack conversion is. Okay, we well, know we we that we ran way off. Where was <laughs> just one thing led to another. Yeah, yeah. We went to a whole different place. The guy was asking about tips to convert automatic side windows to manual. <laughs> it's it's the same car. Same car. So, so, like, just I'll throw my two cents at that. I can't think of any car that had power windows as an option, not standard, but as an option. They would have a different door, inner door structure. So it's just no. a matter of getting the parts now. Keeping the right regulators in. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. just get the regulators in. And now. On, on the flip side, I can't think of any car that came with power windows as standard that would have an inner door structure that would accommodate manual. So as long as your car originally had an option of power windows, you won't have any problems just bolting mm -hmm. in the regular stuff. Mm -hmm. The loop at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You do it so much better. There we go. Um, Dr. Ross is going to pull a Kowalski in the propane powered <laughs> big room. Oh, jeez. Kowalski? What's that about? They, they really, they, they love this idea. They just took off with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny Boyd, he's, Danny Boyd, mm -hmm. he's trading in his bump steer for some Ackerman, man, 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 man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe K, this life is one fat finger away from ending again. <laughs> We've done that. We've done that. Uh, Viva La Cruz, can you offer any tips for tuning triple carbs? I'm completely lost on how to do this. Ooh, that's a loaded question. Triple carbs on? Yeah. Oh, okay, wait. Now, are they, are they mechanical linkage? Are they mechanical center and vacuum outboards do all three have idle circuitry or just the center like there are so many different setups if you if you got a little more specific as to what you have um and then of course it could be an inline with with, with triple levers or something like that yeah like, yeah right if you could be a little more specific we could probably put our heads together and come up with uh my little 80 Hey, Tony, how do I fix a vacuum leak on my old car? Mutz it up. Always. 100% of the time it works. Every time the engine running, you want to get some mutz. Room temperature mutz, not cold because, you know, it's very loose. And, and you don't want it too hot either because then it'll just get sucked through the opening. So you want, you want room temperature mutz, okay? And just as the engine's running, you see where the vacuum leak is, you smash it right in there. You smash it right against the vacuum leak and every time. Well, it could work. It could. Yeah, it's tea. No, it would smell nice. Delicious. <laughs> Once it gets warm, it'll smell really nice. It's drink tea. She's out eating so much. Oh, dear. Bean Stevenson, Kiwi, you need to do a diligent inquisition of this rack matter. I'm going to. I'm going to, like, like driving it today and having a quick look at it is like, this needs a standalone video of just. Like so where they just went you gonna, You're going to put one of the Borgeson boxes in it? Yeah. And go back to the link, regular linkage? And, yep. Yeah. She'd be a lot happier with that. She will be. You know, I mean, unfortunately, it's expensive because we've got to buy it. It's not just a box upgrade. We need the drag link. We need the drop arm off the steering box. We need the idler arm. We need the, the inner, 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 inner tie, rods. tie rods, the tie rod sleeves. Yeah. All that stuff's all gone. Mm -hmm. um, normally, when you convert them, you just buy a box and some power steer hoses and connected to the column and away you go. Mm -hmm. um, but so, then, yeah, they'll take care of her handling, they'll take care of her notchiness. It's because yeah. it's a straight shot into that box. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Um, I just really, like Flaming River do some nice stuff, but mm -hmm. that rack is just woeful. ER cost of 60 is saying, where is the Uncle Kiwi merch? He doesn't love you guys enough to offer you merch. I'm telling you that right now. Mm. 
Whereas Dr. Art and I both have merch because we love you. It has nothing to do with income. No. Nothing. Zero. Zero. No, no. Kiwi, on the other hand, doesn't need the money. You see what I'm saying? He, he's above all of this. That's why he insists that he sit in the center. Oh. Be the center of attention? Yeah. <laughs> I just got put here. I walked in and sit there. I'm like, okay. Uh, Tavo, how you doing, man? Doug Jones must know what the timing chain looks like in Dr. Art's Muffet 318. It's actually Kiwi 318. Um, we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm curious what the timing cover looks like. Yeah, I'll find out. Actually, I know what it looks like. It's just not outcome yet. Okay. Zero, zero put up like Kiwi's maybe someday merch. Yeah. <laughs> and Fubo put up the link to Dr. Art. You guys aren't subscribed to Dr. Art or Kiwi. Go over there and sub to their channels right yeah, now. Would be cool. They do much better stuff than I do. Much, much better stuff than I do. Um, okay, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Can dual quads be better for low end torque and fuel efficiency rather than one four barrel? Uh, say 292, 390 CFMs over a single 750. Oh, tell you what, I, I, I can't, man. To try to get to try to get fuel mileage out of it, you can. Okay, and we actually did videos with. I did a couple of videos on that with uh, uh, Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage, and. Yeah, like, like, all right. The tuning has to be so exact, so precise. Do you see any type of performance or, or is there mileage improvement? But I believe it is possible. Throttle improvement is, or throttle response is, is off the chain, right? It works. You know what I'm talking about, right? That, that dual quad when it's just right and you just ease it. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's happiness. It's, yeah, it's pure, it's pure, it's pure bliss. Did a lot of people leave that out of the equation? It's like, a, oh, they'll make more horsepower in a single floor well. Yeah. But, but it you're forgetting the drivability of those spread, those carburetors spread apart yeah. so far. Yep. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah, you'll make, put a dominator on it, whatever it is, and make tons more horsepower. But you're leaving out the, the feel, the throttle response, the seat of the pants, the, that torque that just happens. The, the noise, the, the, the noise too. The noise. Right. The yeah. It's like, it's like, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Glenn Nickerson, the Terrace for Uncle Kiwi merch shipped from New Zealand is astronomical. Mm -hmm. 189.95 for a thong. Yeah, well, it could be worth it. Depends who's wearing the thong, I guess. Shade Tree Garage, thanks. Thank you, Shade Tree. Let's celebrate the fifth super of my life. How do we celebrate this? Uh, yeah. Talk dance? I mean... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'll do anything for a while. <laughs> I have heard that about you. Yeah, well, it's not really true. Yeah. Well, I'm making it true. Um, Shade Tree Garage. Sorry, I didn't have a ton in my bank now. It's all right, man. Every dollar counts. But. Mm. Formula. So, are dual quad dual plane intakes a thing? They were traditionally for, I mean, so, so like every manufacturer that I could think of offered dual plane, dual quad intake manifold, intake setup. It's sometime during the 1950s or the 1960s. It was always a premium option. So who didn't, okay, so, so it's easy enough to say who had them, right? Who right. didn't have a factory dual quad option at some point from, let's say, 1955 through the only thing I think is maybe like a Lincoln, but it's still, you can get it on a Ford motor, you know? Yeah. Uh, AMC had a, had a, uh, a whole bit of counter deal, but that was Chorus, right? Mm -hmm. um, Oldsmobile. Didn't, didn't the Rocket 350s? It uses. Oh, they were, that's right. Yeah. Two GCs. Cool. They were the same car as they used on the, on the Pontiac. Yeah. Like well, Pontiac had a dual quad option, Buick had a dual quad option, Chevy had all those power pack Chevy, a lot of dual quad Chevys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cadillac, no. Oh, wait, there might have been a dual quad Cadillac, 1959? I, I, I think. Is that a true? Yeah, yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. Right? Like 50s, yeah. Um, Studebaker had a dual quad. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yes, on the 289. Huh. Uh, no, it was dealer. It was dealer. So you can't count. You can't count dealer stuff. 
right? Um, obviously, Mopar had tons of them. Ford had a bunch of them. Yeah, so, so I can see we're, we just ran off on a tangent here. But yes, the dual plane, dual quad setup, just about every manufacturer used them. They're so happy, so friendly. Most of them had progressive linkage. Some of them one-to-one. -one. Doesn't really make any difference. Like the Hemi's roll, roll progressive linkage. But yeah, it's a, it's a great setup. Unless you lived with a, with a, with a, with a well-sorted out dual quad setup, you just can't appreciate them. You will gladly give up the 25 horsepower peak that you're gonna that you're gonna lose as opposed to a you know right intake manifold, right carburetor for the for all the sensations that are involved with the dual quads. And all those cool old dual quad low plane manifolds are all on all these 75 year old guys in the show. Yeah, you know, waiting yep. for <laughs> waiting for the house to go up to the auction for them to come back into the market. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Padman <laughs> wants to know if you can buy lacquer automotive paint anymore. Jeep and Color were the last people I know that they were doing it. And they were doing, you know, like it was available through like the O'Reilly's and places like that. Um, and it was like a premix, so it was pretty thin. Um, and it was for the kind of home, home, you know, driveway painter. Uh, it wasn't, for, you know, in the, in the, it wasn't sold to the automotive refinishing trade, shall we say? Uh, but I, don't, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it around. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the, and they only sold it in court cans. Uh, so, yeah, but I don't really think it's available. It's not particularly good for the atmosphere. Um, but, yeah, and that's, you know, like it started in California, they started banning lacquer paint. You had to go to the, the catalyzed um, urethanes and stuff like that. But um, you can find it. Um, I, I like painting with lacquer paint. It's very forgiving, very forgiving. J. Russell Finch. This is way off topic, but uh, so what videos on YouTube have you three been watching lately? Care to share? What have you been watching? I watch, uh, what did I watch for the few minutes today? I watch Growling Sidewinder, which is my DCS virtual reality. Oh, okay. Find the pilot guy thing. It's, I, get, I get a kick on every one of those. It's like my, a little addiction. I watched. Um, You're an Air Force guy. A lot of people yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Stuff from from Donut Media and um, what else? I, I like um, you know who Tim Dillon is, comedian. Yeah, I love watching his his podcast. Tim <laughs> Dillon, okay, <laughs> because he's just just out of control. So you watch Tim Dillon. Um, I've actually got kind of caught onto. Um, there's a couple of guys doing um, videos on YouTube of of boat ramps, like like in places like Miami and. Uh, various places like that where people just come in and go and launching their boats and just watching the <laughs> continuing <Okay. laughs> the endless <laughs> cock-ups <laughs> that, that go on, you know, like watching, watching people trying to back trailers down the boat ramp and, you know, they jackknife and they pull forward and they jackknife it again and they pull forward and they jackknife again. I don't know, there's something strangely mesmerising about it. <laughs> um, so there's that and uh, anything to do with rallying, you know, hill climbs. Okay. That kind of stuff has always always grabbed my attention. Um, yeah. and there's some pretty wild stuff going on in the hill climbing scene in, in Europe, you know, like um, twin high boosts of powered little tiny sports cars and, you know, pulling 12,000 RPM and just singing like sewing machines. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of fun. I've been hooked on AI commercials lately. AI commercials? AI commercials. Okay. This is one channel. I think it's called Turbo Dog. I don't know if I've got it on anything. And it, it, I can't even describe it. I just can't describe this stuff. But yeah, I've, I've been I've been binging like AI commercials, and lately, like content-wise, like uh, I watch a lot of. Uh, I'm very very interested in alternative history, That's so true. I've been paying attention to. Uh, uh, there's a fellow named John Levy. Uh, there's great videos. Um, there's uh, uh, another one called My Lunch Break. Both of those guys post one video a week. Um, uh, there's another one, uh, Black Kid, uh, Geo Man C. And these guys all get into, it. well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of weirdness in, in history and to be found in architecture and stuff like that. And that's, that's, had, that's, had, that's had a grip on my imagination now for probably the last year. Hmm. There you go. Yeah, you asked. Um, you asked, we, we told. told. Mm -hmm.
the audio is Academy Award level stuff. <laughs> yes. Is, yeah. that, is yeah. that what they call sarcasm? Yeah. It'll get better. This is our first time. This is our first time in this room. It, it, we'll have stuff to deaden the sound and whatnot. You get your flowery curtains on the wall and it'll be fine. Yeah. We literally, okay, you want to you know how impromptu this is now? Okay. This table, I literally bought this on the way here tonight. I, got, I put this together, put it up, put the, put the laptop on it, and sent the live stream. So it was like we're literally that new in this in this room. It's a good job I was a little bit late, otherwise it would have been three of us trying to put together one table. Yeah, it'd still be on the floor then. <laughs> <laughs> the 56 Chevy Bel Air had a 265 V8 and you could get it with twin four barrels. Wow. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a little wee engine for power people. pack. Uh, territory wants financial advice from Kiwi. What and how to so <laughs> what the hell was that? That is my phone. Someone's <laughs> so so text probably my wife texting me. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Kiwi, <laughs> she's, she's, she's like, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Don't answer. <laughs> Kiwi want financial advice from Kiwi about how to soft restore large loans. Uh, financial advice. Yeah, it would be a bad idea, like to tally up everything, because that, that's something. I, I, I get that. I get that question a lot. They want to know what the budget is for putting Big Richard together, and you know they're going to be shocked when it's you know it's just several hundred dollars total. Yeah, I know. I know because see, we know how to build cheap stuff. Right. Well, because I'm yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I do. They, but I, I'm a cheap bastard. Hey, I've, been, I've been buying parts <coughs> for large off um, Rock Auto, so that's the cheapest place yeah. I can buy. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a little bit. But I'm sure you looked for more expensive things first. No, I, I saw you. You're no. like, oh no, that's too cheap. <laughs> Can't possibly be any good. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing is only forty two dollars. Yeah, we buy one of those for a hundred. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they added up a little bit, old man. They added all the wheel cylinders and, and brakes. And yeah. It's surprising how yeah, it's the, lots of little stuff that actually adds up. <laughs> Zero is saying, I think one, just one single Uncle Tony's Garage sticker dead center of the wall. Well, I got this. This is this is gonna go there someplace. I don't know. We, I, I gotta work. I gotta work at the lighting on this room. There's so many things that have to be done yet. But this this is going to be the official podcast room. So, and I'm going to talk about that a lot more in a couple of weeks. But I'm still, things are still wrong. But that's that's what this room is for. Rocco, no nine hundred dollar Woolworths, no mate. No, I mean I know that's not that's too that, cheap. That's not typical for me. But no, I've gone back with the drum brake. Um, and you know I've had quite a few suggestions. You can you know use disc brakes off this body Mopar and that body Mopar. And, um, you know, and it's like you know. For that old girl, it's, she's not fast. So even when even when we stroke it out to three ninety, it's not going to be a fast car. Um, so yeah, you just have a nice rumble to it. And, yeah, yeah. It'll it'll pull. You know, mm -hmm. it'll have some torque, and that's that's all I want it to do. And it's not it's not my go fast car. Yeah, you and should, if you're not going fast, you don't need big brakes. That really rusty wagon in Kentucky should have cut off the whole back of it. Right, just brought it home and made a trailer out of it. There you go. Yeah, a little camper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with Tara, like the drag, drag weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Ripple Burr. How much HP, how much horsepower is enough power? 400, 500, 750, 1500. Yes. 1500 is yes. adequate. 1500 is no, adequate. No, a serious question. It's a serious question. What, well, oh, for what? I'm assuming a street driving car. Oh, uh, uh, just a. a Something you're gonna run road. Just just something that you're not gonna kill yourself in. Four hundred mm -hmm. horsepower in a in a in a two door car like a Mustang Camaro is an insane amount of power. Yeah. Five uh, on a street, right? Unless you've got traction control, five hundred horsepower at the tire is nearly unusable. At the Honestly, tire. At the yeah, tire. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. five hundred horsepower. You see, most people. Think, it's it's gotten it's gotten to the point where. Everything on the internet. Is, oh, we have eleven hundred. Yeah, but your shit's broke every time you run down the track because you're shattering all the parts of that horsepower. But, that, but that's also peak power. 
Right. That's not, you know, and it's, and it's generally being metered and there's a traction, there's some sort of traction control device, or mm -hmm. it's, it's stuck to the track with slicks and a proper suspension. You know, whole chassis and everything else. Yeah. Right. But if you're talking about taking, let's just say, you're going to take a, a Chevelle, or you're going to take a, a Mustang, or a Belvedere. Fill in the blank. Like yeah. Yeah. And you drop a motor that's going to give you 500 horsepower at the tire. And you have a regular DOT street tire, and you're going to run it around on regular streets. But you've got something that's just a smoke machine, yeah. right? You're not going to, you, I mean, you'll hook it if you ease into it. But that's the kind of thing. You just lay it into it aggressively, and it's just going to blow the tires off at anything only like 30 miles an hour. So how much horsepower do you need, right? So if 500 horsepower is, the, is like the edge of what is, is going to be used through a relatively stock suspension, regular tire streetcar, well then, what good is fifteen hundred horsepower, or twenty five hundred horsepower, or thirty billion horsepower? Either way, any way you look at it, it's just spinning the tires. It's it's cool if you want to go. I have thousand yeah. horsepower, and you know can't keep it out of the ditch. Yeah, right. You want to race right. if, if you want a, a street car that's fun, that you know you, you get in and drive on the weekends and just have fun, and you're not out you know from racing for money. Four hundred horsepower is. Yeah. More than, more than uh, especially if you put a five speed or like a six speed automatic behind it. Yeah. Listen, yeah. You, you, you go, if you go off a stoplight, let's say, right, you know, just like a, a real like, light to light street race type of thing, with your 400, 500 horsepower car, remember now, I'm talking about regular on the street, not, not no prep, like where, you know, the rubber laid down and everything else. I'm talking about just like on the pavement. You take you take a well sorted 400 to 500 horsepower car and you put it against an equal kind of weight 2,000 horsepower car you're getting to the other end first. Yeah. It's that simple. You're going to get to the other end first because that other car is spinning, he's back pedaling, he's doing all kinds of stuff while you're and, and he's taking the long way to get there. He's taking a long way to get there. his tail mm -hmm. all the way. Yeah, I mean I go along with these guys. I've done a number of. Um, Mustangs with um, with the 331 stroker engine that I get from TriStar Engines, and that makes about 430 horse crankshaft. Right. Uh, and that that's a lot of car. It's a fun ride. Right? Uh, first and second gear, you can fry the tires effortlessly. Yeah, all you want. Yeah. yeah, you can get up into third, and third it's quite well behaved. Yeah. You know, like you can romp on it, and it accelerates hard, but it doesn't want to get away on you. It doesn't want to hurt you. Um, you get up around that five six hundred horsepower um, and especially like 500 of the wheels those cars will want to hurt you right and then um, not saying he doesn't but you have to have at that horsepower level you have to have the talent to drive that car yeah you can't mm -hmm. just hop in and you, that's why there's so many hellcats that are three feet shorter than when they came off the lot mm -hmm. two days ago mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what i've found over the years if you get a car that'll, that'll, that'll let loose in third gear um, like things are happening much faster in third gear. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're up above say 45 mile an hour, and like if you if you end up with an armful of opposite lock on at 45 it's mile over. an hour on a normal narrow road, not many of us will catch it. You know, obviously there's race car drivers out there that will be able to catch that. It's not an issue, but just regular Joes like ours, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and, and rule, you do not want to put them in the ditch. Yeah, and, and you want to enjoy the car. I yeah. mean, you can have as much horsepower yeah. you want. You, it's, it's undrivable. It yeah. becomes like, it just sits there. But, <coughs> honestly, <coughs> what I like best is, is you know, that tractability. If you get a, a car with lots of mid-range, yeah, not peaky. Um, you know, when we used to race rally cars, it was all about peak horsepower. You know, you want, to, you want every little bit you could get. And you were on it the whole time, like rev limiter every year, like mm -hmm. all the time. But just to cruise around the street, you want something that, you know, okay, you go down the road, you're in third gear and you're five speed and you want to just scoot, you just put your foot down and it'll pull. Roll into it and just yeah, right it'll pull and, and not not um, not bog down and have to wait for another thousand RPM to get on the boil and then, then get going. You want to just be able to put your foot down and goes. Doesn't really care what gear it's in. Yeah. It just goes. So Mark Slav is saying any reason you guys know as to why drag racing never adopted the quick change differentials. Did for a little while. They huh. did. They were actually the, the upper classes. We're going to say up until around 1972. 1971, 1972. 
you know, lots of people were experimenting with them. But you got two two drawbacks with the quick change. Now, so first is that you have an extra, like, let's say, articulation. So in other words, like in a regular rear end, you've just got the ring and the pinion. But in a quick change, you've got the ring and the pinion and the spur gears. So you, there's that much more parasitic loss for them. And then the weak link is the spur gears because they're, they're, they're straight cut and they just don't take impact loading. They, you know, so it, it's just it's just not the rear, there's too much parasitic loss and not strong enough for the, the shock loading of drag racing. But they work in other applications, you know, sprint cars, right? They still use it. Mm -hmm. just, they just don't take shock loading very well. So what, what differentials are they using now in the top fuel cars that are making 10,000 horsepower? Like what? Oh, what? They can't be just nine inch. They've, they've got to be bigger than that. Right? Okay, when I got out of it in 98, okay, we were still using nine inches. Right. Right? Actually, on, on the, the, our car, the, the Twilight Zone, we were using actual factory modular iron center sections. Hmm. Um, they held up. Just as I was getting out of it, the Crispin 10 inch was starting to be used. And that was a top loader rear. Oh, okay. Right. Now, I don't know what they're using today, but whatever they're using today, I'm sure it is something descended from that Crispin top loader. No, oh, okay. You know, the, the forces through that rear axle on those fuel cars must be just. We ran, we ran. Animation. With, with with a stock modular iron center section and a 320 gear, we ran 520. I think we might have actually run into the five teams with that. And, and they held up just fine. It was like one of, the, one of the most least troublesome parts of the car. Right. Right. Mm. It's 908, Jim. Oh my God. How could it possibly be that late? Um, all right, we'll go for a couple more minutes. Um, 426 Hemi saying current nitro cars use a, a, a 12 inch diameter rear. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm sure it's just a further evolution of that 10 inch. Uh, all right, so. Chrysler 925 can take a lot of abuse. Didn't even know they made a Chrysler 925. Yeah, the Spider Gears are a weak link on those. Huh. There you go. The Spider Gears are a weak link. People right away they, they look at it, it's like, oh, it's, it looks like a day of six. It's huge. It's, you know, it's got that weird stop sign shaped back cover. But they have they, it's like a the spider gears made that glass. Spider gears, yeah. <laughs> I think they're just undersized. I know it's been a long time since I got into one of those. All right. So, guys, all right. So, first off, our amazing, fantastic mods that are with us all the time. Zero, ah, zero, Mexican speak. Fubar. Fubar. Fubar are yeah, yeah. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. Um, everybody contributed to Super Chat. Thank you so much. Always appreciate it. Uh, never expected, but always appreciate it. Everybody contributed with just your presence and your conversation. You are equally appreciated. We genuinely, we could not do this stuff if it wasn't for you ding dongs watching us. So thank you. My eternal gratitude to each and every single one of you, even the trolls. No, seriously, I appreciate it. The really trolls cool. watch, yeah. yeah. Um, Dr. Art, so what do you want to tell me here? Uh, a lot of good stuff coming up real fast in, in, in the next week, week and a half here on, on Big Richard. Rapid fire content, rapid, rapid fire. fire. But, but every 48 hours, you should expect to see a video. Um, tomorrow, there'll be some other stuff loaded onto the channel, some shorts and stuff from my dogs that I've been filming at the pound for. Stuff, stuff like that. Okay. But, um, now, what do you do with that? Since January, since I was retired, yes. which is coming to an end, but that's a whole other story. Um, every other Thursday, I go to pause here. Okay. And all the dogs that are for adoption, I go there and I, I film a short of them. Okay. Their name and how to get it in the title, you know, how to contact the pause and stuff like that to get all those dogs adopted. So. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's just, it's cool, to, you know, fortunately there's like a couple that have been there for a couple months and stuff like that, but most of them, you know, they turn out, go in and out pretty quick, so. Uh, sure. And so, it keeps, and it keeps me from buying one. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I like to put, I do, but I don't want a dog, you know. And, uh, literally every time I visited that place, 
I left him to talk. Right, right. <laughs> I just can't not, you know what I mean? Right. So I, I try to stay away. Uh, but that's a good thing that you're doing, absolutely. Kiwi, do you have anything important, impressive, special, or? No, nothing, no good Samaritan type stuff like that. No, really. no, well, just a common yeah, birthday. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am gonna like uh, like I was saying this flaming river steering rack system. I'm gonna kind of do a little expose on that and just show nice. people how bad it is. Um, and it's really you know like I, I'd rather tell people about the, what the good stuff that I've found, but this is just like that's how you that, listen. You, you gotta you gotta they need to know there's yeah. a lot of crap out there. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff that's actually good, but it's crap in the wrong application. Yeah. So this is important. They they need to know these things. Yeah. So we'll go through, you know, what they've done wrong, what you know, not why they've done wrong, but what they've done wrong, what they should have done, uh, and you know what the what the actual better alternative is. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one. All right. And I have nothing. <laughs> Well, you, you, got, you, got some you, here. you got you got upcoming the Hemi, you got upcoming the other Hemi, you got upcoming a trans rebuild, you got right, upcoming right now. I have, I have nothing like you know, you wake up to you'll wake up tomorrow with six new things. That's true. This is true. All right, guys. So that's it. We're gonna pull a plug on this. We'll see you on Sunday night for the re our regular Sunday night live show. Are you still doing lives? Yeah, uh, trying to do one this week and stuff just, just didn't, didn't work out, right, stuff so like that. So, watch this channel for lives. Kiwi, you don't do lives, you don't want to. It's kind of on, on the list with my merch. <laughs> it will start your life as soon as he has merch. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm, I'm no gonna, longer alive. I'm going to hit this button here and make this all come to an end. Ready? Yeah. Okay. There you go. See you guys. <laughs>